This is The Mungle Show with film critic Matt Mungle. On the phone, I've got brothers Chad and Carrie Hayes. They wrote the screenplay for The Conjuring 2, which releases June 10th. They also wrote the first one that uh, received many accolades from critics and fans alike. And I guess I'm ready to lose sleep on this one as well. Hey, guys, welcome to the show. Hey, Matt. You, you live in one of our favorite cities. We were just there. We were at your uh, film festival. Are you in Nashville? No, I'm in Dallas. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we were <laughs> at the Austin Film Festival. Oh, you're like, no, yeah, I Austin. hate Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't hate Dallas. We've been there. Yeah, yeah. no, we, we went to the Austin Film Festival, so it's still Texas, right? Wait a minute. We were at WrestleMania. Oh, we were. So that was a big thing. Oh, know? dude, the latest one. Yeah, I was there. Was that not a trip? Jumping off that bed. Oh, my God. That was our <laughs> first time. We're, we're doing a movie uh, with WWE. We got and, 10 minutes, Trey. We should sorry. focus on content. Sorry. We can catch up on the other stuff. But, yeah, we we loved it. It was a blast. Absolute blast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad somebody's keeping us on track and schedule here. Yeah. So, yeah, I would talk about anything for any time. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, we just did our weekly show yesterday, our full-length show, and we were talking about, you know, June releases and obviously The Conjuring 2 and and everybody I talked to that was on the show and, and I've seen around loved The Conjuring. It's probably one of their favorite horror films, and now the second one comes out. It's been so well-received by critics and fans of the genre. Did that add to the pressure of writing this second one that you know you had to live up to the greatness that was the first one for the genre? Oh, yeah. 150%. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's like a, when Carrie and I and James were first talking about it, it was like, guys, you know, we if we don't do this right and do it better or scarier than the first one, what's the point of doing it, you know? And yeah, a lot of a lot of hard work went into this movie to make sure we elevated it. And I'll be honest with you, we're very proud of the way it's turned out. It, it is scarier than the first one. It's an amazing emotional journey on this one as well. I think, I think that it's a bigger critics ride. are really connecting with it on that level too and in the in the design of of the scares and what james did so um thank you i mean i i love hearing that people are talking that way we we can follow tracking and stuff but to hear it from someone's voice is very exciting i appreciate that yeah absolutely now going back to even doing the first one now that you had that one under your belt and doing the second one maybe is a little different but when you started to get into this genre especially the conjuring all that i talked about was there any reluctance in treading in these waters especially because you're not doing something that's fictional these are real people and you're doing based on their real life and things that they have faced is there any trepidation in going into those waters I don't no, know. We're believers. Yeah. I feel protected. Yeah. You know, it's like how Lorraine worked, how Lorraine and Ed worked, you know, by having faith, you have power and authority to, to, uh, to not let these things into your life. So, um, no, I think it's just the opposite. We found them were actually rather compelling to get into it because a lot of the world has no idea this kind of thing goes on. They think it's just in storybooks and having been part of eyewitness accounts of things and our journeys and travels and writing experiences, you know, we know that. Uh, evil exists. We, we've seen it firsthand. And working with Lorraine and Ed, who actually had a full-time career out of it, was was very compelling. And when you identify with these journeys, it's like why we like to stick to uh, true stories is, is because you can relate to them on, on, on particular levels. I mean, there's nothing in this movie that not that one person won't find that they can relate to. There's just so many different layers to it. And it's just fun to dig in and know that this happened to real people. And then when you interview them and you just find you're just done, you're completely dumbfounded, you know, that it's real. But it's it's, it's an interesting approach. It's why we we we've like written to, some very, very scary things and dark things. And Chad and I have been around the world and witnessed yeah. some even darker things, you know, firsthand. But, you know, it's we never, ever, ever approach it going, oh, I hope we're not getting in over our heads here. Mm -hmm. Except for the one guy say offer to oh, yeah, yeah, have a have to have a demon possess us and then he'll get it out. <laughs> and I, went, uh, I don't think so, but uh, thank you for that kind offer. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's a true story in wow. India that was offered to us. We we're like, yeah. no, thank you very much. This is a low level out. demon. It's that a low level demon. demon. It's okay. Go, nah, I'm pretty good. I don't need to experience that. Wow, that is insane. And so, and I hear it these was. stories, and I and I watch these films, and I have to tell you, I'm mean, I'm a believer too. Still, I watch these movies, and I come out terrified. I come out scared, mm -hmm. not not for me personally that you know something's going to happen because I have that protection, but I come out fearful because it's it just kind of puts you on edge. It makes you a little jumpy and nervous and. And then you talk to people who some people love that feeling and some people, they, they don't want to wake up. They say, you know, that I'll lay in bed and I've had to pee all night, but I'm scared to get up and walk across the floor <laughs> because, <laughs> because of these images. 
You know, what is, what is it about us that, whether believers or not, that draws us into this genre and makes us want to watch? You know why, it, quite honestly, it, it, Carrie and I design these, these movies, and I think a lot of genre films fall into these things, like roller coaster rides, to be honest with you. Like, when you, you have this big, gnarly roller coaster in front of you, you know it's going to be terrifying, but you're strapped in, it's your theater seat, it's your roller coaster seat, and then you have the... T- you know, the anticipation of that first hill and you get to control the dips and turns and the fears and the upside down loops and all of that. So it's very much like a ride, you know, and good rides stay with you and good experiences stay with you. And in the genre, it really falls in, at least in our mind, that's how we really try to write them where, you know, you can't just do a zillion billion loops all the time, you know, analogous to scares. You have to give some breathing room and anticipation and let it down so I can make you unaware of when the next one is coming. Well, I think people are also very drawn to true stories, you know, mm-hmm. because you're going, wow, this really happened. And it's, and I mean this in the best sense. It's good. It's a little bit of guilty pleasure that it's not happening to you. But you get to go for the same <laughs> ride that they did. And I think, honestly, it's like to to be super frightened and know you're OK, because mm-hmm. it's not the real thing. As Chad said, it's a roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. is an adrenaline rush. And it's, uh, you know, and, and again, and depending on how it ends, mm-hmm. you know, if it's a happy ending, then you walk out and you go, wow, I just saw a good story. Well, yeah, and and James is such he's such a great director in the sense that he's so visual. It's like a visceral experience, you know, and. Uh, and sometimes you can really connect when, when they get under your skin. I mean, Terry and I sat in a screening a couple of weeks ago with Patrick and Vera at Warner Brothers, and we purposely sat right behind them because we wanted to see what was going to scare the two people that literally were in every scene of the movie. And those guys jumped so many times, and we were laughing about it afterwards because it's like it's, it still gets you. Even though you know the story, you know everything about it, you still get, you still get scared, and that's fun. I mean, it's just fun. Yeah, absolutely. Really and I was going to tell you, because after you guys write these stories and you pin it and it's perfect, you sort of have to turn it over. How proud are you with what James has done with directing both of these films and bringing your written word to the big screen visually? Oh, very proud. Very so proud. proud. I mean, it couldn't be more thing. proud, it's, to be honest with you. It just turned the out so great. The challenge that Chad and I have as writers is you put your best foot forward and you put it on the page. And hopefully when you're done reading one of our scripts, you go, wow, I just saw a good movie in the read, right? But then you hand it over to a director, and this is hap- does not happen all the time, but it did happen with James on the first one, where he elevated Rise right, on the right, page yeah. and, and, and brought in, you know, what he was really good at. And so, you know, to, to stand back and go, wow, he's made that into a really good movie is so rewarding. Cause, yeah. Again, we've been with directors. There you go. No, oh, man, <laughs> didn't get it. Didn't get it. You know, didn't, didn't shoot the movie we saw in our head. Right. You know? So it's not always everyone's fault. You know, when you come on on a creative level, you have to have your own vision and, and you just hope that it's the vision that you wrote. And in James, uh, in Conjuring 1 and Conjuring 2, I would just say he hit it out of the park full times. Loved the first one as everybody did. And uh, I say love as much as I lost sleep on. But yeah, I'm excited to lose sleep on this one as well. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, next time we catch up, we'll talk about the WrestleMania film. But uh, good luck with this. Right. I, appreciate- I appreciate that, Matt. Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate your time. You guys have a good one.